my dear friends in this uh, today's lecture we are going to talk about the delay condonation petitions how to draft a, a delay condonation petition under the limitation act secondly how you should plead before the judges so one is drafting very very important and you please understand in this environment uh, where the judges are supposed to dispose of a number of cases in a day it is not that you be pleased by arguing for one hour and lose the case but you must be able to present your matter in such a way that the judge comes to conclusion within minutes there will be two stages in your petition that is being adjudicated from my little experience i would like to share the first stage is the pre the presentation of your petition which their lordships may read and come or they may take few minutes to read it in while the petition is taken up for hearing two things can happen you cannot always expect the judges to come prepared you must remember they are uh, disposing of so many cases and in a day and their life entire 24 hours must be spending only on reading studying it is a very very difficult and boring job at least to me now i what i have learned i want to share it that's the purpose of this i learned from whom the first is honorable justice abai oka justice abai oka and uh, he is the honorable judge of supreme court highly rated uh, uh, judge with excellent knowledge i don't want to say much on that extremely revered by the lawyers of supreme court but their lordship was giving a lecture which i accidentally appeared to read it uh, view it to advocates on record and their lordship explained how a slp has to be prepared one what exactly the judge will look at that and what are the emerging uh, uh, trends which are likely to have great impact which we have to take cognizance of and in that one thing is a condonation how to prepare uh, present prepare a petition for condonation of delay because uh, there is a right of appeal to you but there is added attachment that within these days only you have to appeal and we had a liberal interpretation through section 5 of the limitation act and then a special acts like insolvency and bankruptcy code where the uh, objective of the code itself is time bound resolution and the law is drafted in such a way to put an end to this uh, uncalled for litigation there should be conclusion and the lordship has explained beautifully the issues that are emerging this is one input i have taken this is recorded you all you all can read it also view it in this uh, powerpoint presentation and the second actually i learned uh, this is one is uh, based on a, an idea the lordship uh, honorable supreme court judge abayoka is explaining so you are recognizing the importance of uh, uh, filing a petition second thing is when you are operating before a judge and the judges will look at it in a different way so again i repeat that uh, this is uh, what i learned real life study from honorable justice rajesh kumar jain of honorable nclet justice that we are going to take up a beautiful learning you will get again i am repeating you don't need to write to 100 pages judges will not read you don't need to argue uh, hours together judges have no time and even if they listen they are not listening that is the understanding so you have to write in three pages and speak in two minutes then you may win the case based on the uh, the standard standard that we are going to set third i learned from honorable prakash kumar a judicial member of nclt president retired 
extraordinary knowledge, extraordinary knowledge. All the people who are talking has got a lot of things to learn from their mechanism. He had got such a depth of knowledge in IBC and I was fortunate to appear before him as a novice. But uh, I learned you know, the way he's looking at this thing. Within three, four to five minutes, uh, the case is disposed of to the satisfaction of both the parties. And uh, that was the ex excellent uh, judge. And then Sanjeev Jain. Honorable Sanjeev Jain, sir, I appeared before him. Uh, with regard to condonation petitions under section 42 of IB code, where the liquidator rejects the claim or restoration of petitions and how they judge you. All these judges have one thing in common. They are very pleasant. They don't terrorize you. In tribunal, this is a problem uh, to say they terrorize you. And you don't know when they will find you, what they want and uh, how to speak and all. But these people always dis pleasant disposition, kindness, kindness. And uh, I always used to think uh, a, 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 appearing before a tribunal is like writing a test and when what will happen like that. And there is a chance uh, yesterday, uh, Chief, the Honorable Chief Justice of India was speaking uh, in a memorial lecture Amman Nambiyar's, uh, what a beautiful lecture of on constitution, like a Charles, Charles Darwin, evolution of uh, the humankind from ape to humans, like that constitution evolution. Uh, how the part of Amman Nambiyar, the dawn of the legal profession, on this, he lordships analyzed. That's a wonderful lecture. At least it, uh, I read it 22 times. I'm just writing notes on this. And because constitutional law, how emerged very beautifully explained. But I wanted to uh, uh, say that it is because of the honorable Supreme Court judges who had a, a great vision to listen to patients. Because most of the uh, the judgment arguments of M. N. Nambiar uh, were against the judgments which came positively. You understand in Gopalan's case also, uh, there, the discussion was whether Article 21, Article 19 and Article 14, the three are treated as silos. Uh, but he didn't agree to that. M. N. Nambiar, he canvassed very strongly. They all should be interpreted together. Only the dissenting judge, Fazil Ali, agreed with that. But uh, the majority judgment was against uh, the arguments. But uh, after uh, in uh, 1952, 76, uh, uh, 67, the Menaka Gandhi's case came. Then whatever the women Nambiar uh, argued and whatever uh, Honorable Justice uh, Fazil Ali um, dissenting judgment, they became the order of the day. Therefore, I felt that he was given the opportunity to talk and listen. But here in today's uh, lower uh, courts, they, you will be shouted down. And uh, where is the question of putting your points across? You will be shaking. And what can you do? Because the judge sits for five years in the same position. Be as it may. And I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, I learned, I wanted to share it. There is nothing else in this, uh, uh, these things, but it will be very, very beneficial to you. First, let's listen to what Lord Shid's, uh, Justice Abhay Woka uh, speaking about the emerging trends.